And the web interactivity is like type in some words in a text field to hit the carriage return. That's interactivity. Or if the text disappears from the screen, yeah. after you hit the carriage return, well, yeah, you could yeah, say yeah, that's yeah. interactive. And, and it's not carriage return, really. It's hit the submit button. Yeah. Submit, yeah. Submit, yeah. Submit, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> with all the implications of the, you know, <laughs> submits to the information superhighway. Hi, 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 this is Mark Cantor. Welcome to the Mark Cantor Show. Now I want you to know, this is not one of those normal kind of Tom Brokaw kind of things. Here we're going to be diving into the internet, checking out what's going on behind the scenes. You got the hackers hacking on the systems, you got the guys down in the lot working on the digitizing, you got the programmers up in Silicon Valley, those are all my connects. We're going to cut through the bullshit, we're going to focus on what's important to business, not what they want you to know. We're going to focus on what's really important to people, and all the things that really create great compelling experiences. So the Mark Cantor Show could be available on the web, it could be on a CD-ROM, traditional television broadcast, it doesn't matter, because the content itself is scalable. Now you know in Hollywood they can take a film, they've got theatrical rights, cable rights, videotape, they've got a lot of ways to make the money back. But in our interactive business, we actually call it the CD-ROM business. You know, you have to understand that the content has to kind of exists as an ethereal bubble, and it gets personified in a lot of different ways. That's the problem, is that the technology has been driving what the content is. I'd rather have the content to find what the technology is. You see, we're out there pushing the envelope, trying to understand what's going on, cutting through the bullshit for you, the viewer, because that's what matters. Here are the five segments of the Mark Hunter Show. Unlike a traditional TV show, we don't just broadcast the episodes once. They're all archived. They're up there. That's really taking advantage of the website. All right? Now, I could actually change the material at any time, travel around the world, making reports, and that's what the global scene is about. This, this is Mark Hunter, back into the hotel is Mark Hunter. Hunter. Or I could be writing things about Bill Gates or what really matters to me, and that's the read between the lines segment. As the world of multimedia grows and all the cool content comes out, things like Psychic Detective, hey, I can report about that in the content of the week. Or I could be interviewing my friends, Fred Davis or anybody else, Steve Jobs, who knows? I, maybe I'll even have Bill Gates on here one day. We're building a database of entertainment information that can be accessed and used. Some of the background information, the outtakes, longer lengths of the interviews, those will all be available on CD-ROM and other things. See, that's the point of scalable content, is that we're really leveraging off of what the assets are, in this case, Mark Cantor. One of the things that really fascinates me is how people and technology are intersecting together and the technology is driving the people and the people are driving the technology. You know, we're going to be doing interviews with some of the really important people in this industry and one of those people is Fred Davis. Now, Fred is someone who's played the corporate game, he's got an amazing website now, he's been an editor, done all those things. He's really putting together art and commerce. Here we are in Fred's orchid room, and it's like it's kind of like a cool house. It's like where all the orchids are grown. Yeah, I, I love orchids. It's a great balance for computers. It's that yin yang thing. You've got the high tech on the one hand, the total frenzied nature of the computer industry. Then you have orchids, which take seven years from seed to their first flower that are on a whole different time span. Different it's cycle. a really good balance. And Fred, you got your whole house wired. Explain your net. Oh, yeah, well, Lynn, I'm going to have to jump around here for a sec just to fully show it off because I love. Surprising people by showing them in the closet in the basement now. I've got the server with 32 megs of RAM and 4 gigabytes of hard disk got space. Happen. I've got ISDN on here. I've got my ISDN link, the laptop, the server, the comm workstation. All the computers in the house, which are about 10 right now, are all connected on Ethernet, running at about 10 megabits per second. So here we are down in the web scene, and we're about to see the merger of the web and multimedia. Okay, so what you're going to be able to put shockwave or director files or applets with java or any of these new things what it is is it's a layer on top of the net that right here is today's net where it's mostly text or i go back to a page and i can make it look pretty by saying okay put some graphics at the top of the page and do some simple things but still it's a text and graphics two-dimensional right. medium it's sort of where we were like in 1985 Right? We've got PageMaker. Right. Oh my God, I put a graphic and text. Right. Or even earlier, where in the labs in the early 80s or late 70s, people were playing around with graphics and the page was coming alive and it was an exciting time. Now what's going to happen is the net is going to come alive. Bandwidth is increasing slowly, but what's increased more 
is creativity and the opportunity on the net. And the two of those things have driven Netscape from obscurity to a multi-billion dollar company. The internet, that's the current buzzword du jour. Everyone wishes that it could just solve their problems. It, it's great, it's important, it connects everything together. As the data changes, then we can be connected. But if it's just text and graphics, we're still limited. We have to have the multimedia aspects of the internet. It has to grow to where at home is going with the cable modems and broadband distribution to eventually move us from the single user era to the multi-user era. That's what the internet is about. Don't get worried about the fact that the Netscape is too slow and da 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 and you're waiting. The world gets better. The hardware guys don't retire. When people go to watch something on their interactive TV of the future, it's going to be, we're, we're prototyping that in low res today. Right. And that the really exciting thing about it is that there'll never be 500 channels. There'll be 50,000 or however many people want to do. Because whoever wants to put up a server is going to have their own channel. Right. And it's not going to be constricted by your Ted Turners and your General Electrics and whoever, anybody with a server could put it on. And that's what's so freaky to the power establishment about the internet, and whether it's on the internet or a private network or whatever, that model is here to stay. Because they can't control it. Because they can't control it. Right. If you want to watch the Mark Cantor show, you'll be able to. Of course, the downside is if you want to watch the Mark Furman show, right. you'll be able to watch Absolutely. that too. Right. But that's what freedom of the press is all about. Mono media is still just as important as multimedia because those are the building blocks you use it in. So you've got to have good writing, good art, and good music. and good orchid grow. Absolutely. I'll give you a perfect example of how people influence technology. Now look at a guy like Steve Jobs. Here he's invented the Macintosh, that he helps build object-oriented programming and stuff, but now it's not just he built some cool tools at Pixar, it's the fact that he put creative people together with those tools. Now we got Toy Story. Okay, so here we are at Content of the Week. Are we rolling? Okay, here we are at the Content of the Week segment. Now we're going to focus on a product called The Individualist, but unlike other websites, we're not simply going to, going to give it a little review, a little Siskel and Ebert sort of thing, or like a TV show, you know, sort of give it a little fluffy kind of, oh, isn't this a wonderful product approach, okay? What we're going to do is look at the why behind the product. Why was it created? What was Todd thinking about when he did this? What's the technology underneath it? Other reviews will give you the actual personification of the product. I'm looking at what was the philosophy behind it. Everyone wants to be able to say that their product is interactive, whether or not they've really elevated uh, the ante at all. If you look at this Bob Dylan desk, it's just horrible. I mean, why would I want to click on the coffee cup to start blowing in the wind? I mean, what the hell does that, you know? Well, unfortunately, that decision was made for you about, you know, what you would click on to get it. Um, and again, it gets back to this sort of um, argument about what do people really want? Um, a lot of people who get involved in interactivity have bought into the argument that um, that there is a great desire already there on the part of the audience to do more. And uh, for the most part, the audience is not aware of what's possible, so they don't have that great desire to do more. And all of these um, clever kind of, you know, game structures, as much as they satisfy, you know, the 14, 15 year old male's desire for some challenge, don't reveal to the audience at large what it is that they haven't already gotten out of the artist. This is really different than No World Order. I mean, this is really a real growth beyond that. Well, The Individualist is not an interactive music disc per se, uh, in that, um, by my definition of interactive music, so there are some things that are, um, uh, let's say, linear. And then there are some things that are um, uh, you can take control of. Like, for instance, we have a little interactive game there for Castle for a Stone. You can actually uh, navigate around the space and throw stones at the various personalities. And in some cases, in our own uh, Dave VR, the replacement for QuickTime VR, you can take interactive control of that and explore the environments that are in that. OK, so tell me about this Dave thing. What's that? Dave is the digital anamorphic video engine. At the core is an engine that allows for algorithmic generation of animation, right? Real-time real -time graphics, uh, along with uh, synchronous Redbook audio playback. Ion has been working, in addition to creating content, to create tools to allow other developers to create and enhance CDs as well. Uh, to, to find the solutions, you have to figure out the problem. Right. So we use we use our own productions as test beds for the uh, enhanced uh, CD tools. 
So you guys call this the Enhanced Toolkit CD, the Enhanced CD thing? Or? It's uh, the Macromedia Enhanced CD Toolkit, uh, and it's specifically uh, made for a director, and uh, the X objects were uh, produced here at ION, um, and also we're working with some director uh, documents that uh, that are written on top of the X objects that'll give director developers all the information they need to be able to use the X objects in their own titles. So we've got this um, multi-layered virtual environment creation engine that uh, is high performance and cross-platform and essentially allowed us to um, uh, to make a little bit of data look like it lasts a long time. When Bill Gates wakes up in the morning time, he focuses on business and sort of this whole sort of left brain approach to life. The balance of art and commerce is this ongoing battle. And what the cyber youth are noticing is that all this marketing stuff and everything that's taking over the web is continuing this oppression of the people and the separation of those who have and those who have not. So of course the cyber youth are going to be the anarchist hackers. They're going to be people who are going to pierce their lips, dye their hair blue, and they're the future. They're the people that Bill Gates doesn't understand. The next rock and roll is this sort of cyber art revolution because we've got the free distribution channels now. All right? We don't have to go to some Jewish guy and schmooze him up and get onto his shelf space. We don't have to play the game of heavy financing. You can sit there with your little porter pack and a computer and you can have your own TV show. You can have your own channel. So that's the revolution that Bill Gates can't stop.